hello it's G here again and welcome to another video I apologize for the delay I've had quite a, a lot of things happening away from YouTube but anyway I'm back now so let's dive straight into the opponent AI script and we're going to come here the uh, private bore where we say we're assessing the player underneath we'll create a public float underscore assessing time let's make that equal to three into the comments defines the assessing player time frame So with that in place, let's come to the AI state. So let's have a look. We have attack and retreat from the player in place. In the void start, assessing the player equals false. So let's come to the I enumerator and we'll create those these actual states so just copy one of the case blocks and you can put them anywhere I'm going to put them under opponent idle at least for now so let's actually create those states so we'll just copy and paste the naming convention so we have attack the player and retreat from the player as well. So let's just copy and paste that naming convention in for the cases. So we did create these so we're actually fine. We shouldn't get any errors. And now we need to actually generate a number. So we'll actually put this in the initialize function for now. Again, like I said, a lot of code that we're going to port will have to change about as we fill out the AI. But this will do for now. So underscore decide aggression priority equals and we're going to say random dot range open and close brackets close the line off inside the brackets we're going to say one comma nine so that's the ranges hit here we begin here with value of 1 and end with 9. So let's get this into the comments. So we'll say decide aggression priority. And we'll say this equals a random range between 1 and 9. So with that in place, let's come to the opponent idle function now. So we're setting assessing the player to true here. We call the assess player function. And now we need to put another if block. And it can go here at the bottom. So if open and close brackets. Now it doesn't matter about this return statement because it's within these brackets here. So it shouldn't affect it. But if needs be we can always change it round. So underscore side aggression priority double equals underscore defensive priority dot start so let's get this into the comments if 
Aggression, priority. Is. Yeah, we'll put that is greater than or equal to the defensive priority range start. Then we can actually change the state. I suppose I should have just copied that line there, but never mind. We'll just paste that in. So attack the player. So obviously now we want to change it to retreat <coughs> from the player. Let's just tidy up those comments there. And let's save that off. So Where have we here? Um, yes, we have if the opponent is grounded, return. Now, that will actually cause problem because we actually um, needed to read the code here. So, There's actually a number of ways we could do this. So let's have a look. So this is where we actually move the player. Now we could, to be honest, cut and paste this below this line so it actually reads this block of code first and then decides or we can move this out to its own function so let's have a look I think I'll move it out actually to its own function So let's come here. It can be of type private void. And we'll need to give this a naming convention. In fact, we'll just say opponent gravity idle. We'll still need to call this function within the actual state, but let's just move it out. Because we have we we're going to be building up these actual states quite a bit so we'll probably end up moving a lot of code out in separate functions just to make it easy it's just breakdown so we can makes it easier to see which block we're actually what each block actually does sorry so let's just tidy everything up and we'll need to actually call that function. And let's have a look. Shouldn't have moved the idle animation out, but never mind, we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. So let's paste that there for the minute. Mm. 
and we'll just put in the comments that we're going to call that function We'll just move the the idle animation where we call the function back into opponent idle and I think we'll leave it there for now and the reason is is in the next lesson I want to move on to these functions so I'm going to start those and rather than starting them getting a few lines in place and then you know stopping this lesson let's just begin them all in a new video <clears throat> but as always I hope you enjoyed this lesson I hope to see you next time and until then as always bye for now